it's my first match giving a talk. I've, I've actually sat down with you guys there for, for many, many different times and listened to lots of talks. And I'm, I'm probably one of the few people here that don't actually have uh, you know, a particular meetup that I actually arrange, you know? So uh, <laughs> makes it makes it a bit, a bit of a change compared to everybody else. Um, I just want to spend a little time today just talking about uh, scraping, web scraping. Um, and I, I suppose if you think about what we do, uh, in, in effect, basically, we are, we are the, the data plumbers of the world, okay? That's what we do, largely, okay? Now, some people maybe do design, but most programmers, we're really taking data from one place and we're putting it somewhere else. So we basically manage data from day, day in, day out. Um, and obviously, from I mean, if you look at the history of this thing, going back to very ancient times where the, the Greeks were being attacked by the Persians in 490 BC, and they won the Battle of Marathon, and next thing, next thing they have a, a, a guy that has to run, a messenger has to run back to Athens to say, we won the war, or won the battle at least. And obviously a very famous victory. Um, I mean, that's probably one of the, that's a, a very early instance of basically of, of messaging and data. And, and following on from that, I mean, you have many other instances where, where uh, obviously technologies improved situations. In, in the 1850s, basically, you have the likes of Reuters who used messenger pigeons for basically for transferring information from the Korean, or sorry, from the K Crimean War going back. And obviously people made a killing on that when the city of London found out what, who won what battle, etc., and they could make, make money on that. And Google really took that to uh, a whole new level. I mean, back in 1998, when they started off, they said, okay, well, let's just automate the whole thing. Let's just scrape it off everybody's site. Because that's effectively what they did. I mean, they started off by basically scraping the whole entire web and pulling out information, repackaging it, and effectively monetizing it and selling it back. And that's basically where we are still. Um, I mean, obviously things have changed. There are lots of APIs out there now for people to do this kind of stuff, which makes things a lot easier. But there's still an awful lot of data that's out there right now that basically the only way to get it is actually scraping. So I suppose the key thing of this thing is data is key, but information is king. So actually getting the data is one thing, actually being able to turn it into something useful is another thing altogether. Okay, I, I'm going to just talk about a couple of little toolkit of different things I, I found useful over the years to do this. I mean, obviously the, the standard one is probably request, which obviously just makes it simple for, for, for pulling down data. Um, Cheerio is a very handy little little tool, basically, for doing nice j jQuery selectors to allow you to parse the site, uh, which I find particularly useful. Uh, and Batchflow is something I, I, for me, which I, I just use for basically doing sequential access. Now, obviously, you can use async, and there's lots of other different ways of doing that as well, but I find it particularly useful. Um, and just Selenium uh, WebDriver, a lot of people use that for testing, but uh, as I say here, it's really handy for handling badass sites. <laughs> and you'd be surprised out there. I mean, I've come across sites where... Uh, you know, there's Israeli security guys trying to make sure that you can't actually scrape the site, you know, and it's, uh, y y you know, uh, sometimes you need something that basically is a browser to actually to pull the data down. Um, I mentioned also String.js because it just uh, adds a lot of handy uh, string functionality, particularly for handling things like um, uh, HTML encoding and that kind of stuff. So Cheerio is, is uh, probably the standard package this thing. It's a very simple one, really. I mean, uh, as you can see here, basically, you can, you can basically, you can, a string, or saying I, I can import a string. Normally, you do a request and you pull down the actual body of the of the, the request and you uh, shove it into basically Cheerio. You load it up and then basically you can do your selectors off that. You can also do kind of um, uh, uh, you can do selectors where you get got, got groups of stuff and, and parse through it and that kind of stuff as well. So it's actually really really handy for this kind of stuff, um, and I, I would highly recommend it. There is another, another nice little one as well for actually converting uh, XML basically to JSON as well. Just I didn't mention this, but it is actually handy as well at times. But uh, Cheerio normally does the business. Um, I just mentioned String.js. Um, it has some very handy tools for things like um, unescaping uns HTML um, and also decoding HTML entities and that kind of stuff as well. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a whole toolkit of stuff. I mean, it's probably well worth having a look up yourselves, but it does an awful lot of string manipulation uh, outside beyond the actual standard string prototype stuff. Um, I mentioned Selenium. I, I probably won't touch on it too much now at the moment, but uh, it is certainly... Uh, when all else fails, and I've found situations where, I mean, you obviously Cheerio, you're running a, a straightforward, sorry, request running straight against the actual the, 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 the website. You've got things like uh, PhantomJS, which you can use as well. Some places block the Phantom, okay, so, uh, and then, but Selenium basically will, first, it's like, it, like, it always gets through. That's, uh, that's the, it's like the, like the, like the, the uh, what's it, Pony Express. It always gets through. Um, okay, um, a 
couple of things on this. Um, I just I, I just general advice on it. Um, I mean, obviously, like if, when I, for scraping purposes, it's obviously best to be polite. Okay, and I do try to be polite as much as I possibly can. Um, so I would, in general, basically try to respect basically the robots uh, that TXT that people have. Um, normally, in, in, the, in that they'll have like they'll um, specify basically what they want you to want, what want you to look at, what you don't want you to look at. Okay, so obviously things like searches and that kind of stuff are obviously they, they consume a lot of resources. They don't want you basically banging on their searches or logins or other different places like that in the site as well. So you try and avoid that as much as possible. Um, you try to delay your crawl. I mean, typically you want to have uh, uh, no more than one to ten seconds. Obviously, now big popular sites can actually can take a lot more load. Smaller ones can't. So basically, just uh, you can you can gauge it. Uh, there's a site there basically which is very handy, mo moz.com, which allows you to check the popularity of a site, um, and you can look at that and it will give you some indications to, as to how useful, uh, how often you can hit it. Um, but I if you're ever ever in doubt, err on the side of caution. You, like you don't want to. You don't want to piss them off. I mean, let's be honest. Most people, most system means just want to get their job done. That's all. Um, it is a good policy to identify your crawler. So if you're doing something nasty or by accident, they, there's some way of contacting you, okay? Because there's nothing worse than looking up IP addresses trying to figure out who, where the hell this thing's coming from, okay? Um, and that's it. I'm, I'm going to just show you a, a little sample, if you don't mind. Um, what I'm going to do here, first of all, I'm just going to show you basically where we're going to go. Okay, um, let's. Uh, what I want to do here basically is let's let's look. Let's go for the, the Champions League. Okay, let's, or, or sorry, Premier League. Okay, let's let's pull down the scores. Okay, so I want to scrape basically all the information off this. I mean, in theory, basically you can scrape everything basically from the year dot on this. Okay, I, I'm looking here at the moment basically on uh, August, but I could look at you could look at September or whatever I want to look at. Okay, actually, there's not much in September so far. Okay, so let's maybe stick to something. Let's filter it back. Uh, okay, let's, let's, let's stick with s September, but let's go say September 2015, right? Eventually. <laughs> Fixtures. Okay, results is what we want here. Yeah, okay, filters. Um, we're gonna try that for September again. Less fixtures. I hate them. Okay, and let's uh, uh, let's do 2013. Let's oh, 2013 information, right? So you can pull back everything and you want. And obviously, if I want to come, if I'm a diehard Sunderland supporter and I want to get every every game I've ever played and work out how many goals they score on average and you know whether they're pretty better on Saturdays or whether they're better on a Monday, I don't know. I want to track that information. So what I'm going to do now is. You can spot them not a Mac user, by the way. Um, okay. I tell you, maybe first thing, just let's just see it in action. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna have a little bit of coding here. Wait a few seconds. So node football. So uh, that, and that's basically what it's done, is scrape basically all the records there. I have all the different teams, so I can see my Sunderland, I can see basically the team, sc well the team score, not showing up that one there for some reason. <laughs> but anyway, it, that's, it, that's basically that's what it does. Um, to give you a little idea on the code itself, um, oh sorry. So I'm basically using requests, I'm basically using Cheerio, uh, I'm identifying basically my agent, uh, I can actually use the months if I want to loop around the months and that kind of stuff. I can obviously specify the year in 2014, in this case here. Um, I set up my options. Um, I basically pull, do my request, and if it works, I basically parse it, and I load it up. And I'm looking basically inside, inside, basically looking for a different, obviously selecting out the various information, pulling it out, and actually, and I'm putting it together basically. And then I, I obviously pull out the, the score array, and I break it up, and I basically create all the data. And obviously, you can save it off to a database. So that's that's in essence what it, what it does, um, and that's that's really it. I mean, I, there's a couple of other small pieces of advice I give. Um, if you're when you're doing this kind of stuff, you should always try and make sure basically that um, it'll, if it stops, you can restart it. Okay, if it left off, and that's that's certainly pretty useful as well. And uh, other than that, have fun. Thank you very much. Thank you.